Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Money Matters Top Tips for Success, where each and every day I bring on new business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives and have them share their top tips for success with you. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres to keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, moneymatterstoptips.com. Click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Steve Cadigan on the line, and he is founder over at Cadigan Talent Ventures. Steve, welcome to the show. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So I'm excited to get more into what you're doing over at Cadigan Talent Ventures and how you're helping your clients. But before we do that, let's get a little bit further into your background. So how did you get started uh, in your career in business? Okay. Well, Adam, I've been uh, working in the corporate world probably for about 30 years, primarily in the world of human resources. And unlike a lot of people, I accidentally found this profession. I don't think I ever even knew in my college days what human resources actually was. Uh, what I knew in school was I really liked sports and I really liked history, so I was a history major. But when I got out into the working world, my first job, I was uh, had the great fortune of being in a company. It was a fashion company, a spree in San Francisco, and they rotated me around, and I ultimately rotated through the world of recruiting and human resources, and I fell in love with it. And I fell in love with it because everything that I loved about sports, organizing teams, finding out which players work best with which coaches and and how to organize to win was everything that human resources was about and so i feel really lucky probably in my early 20s i found something that i really love and i doubled down on that i went to grad school at university of san francisco got a master's in hr and od and since then i've worked in about six different industries uh, three different countries i've worked in the u.s canada and singapore and I'm very proud to say that I, you know, I've had a really exciting, very successful human resources career. About six years ago, um, I was uh, left being the first head of human resources at LinkedIn and I decided to go off on my own. I took a little bit of a breather and decided that what I wanted to do was really help a lot of organizations address you know, talent um, and resource challenges that we had faced when we were growing LinkedIn from when I was there, 400 employees to about 4,000. So that's how I got started, and that's a little bit about what I'm doing today. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, and I do want to get um, – that we're going to definitely get more into Cadigan Talent Ventures and what you're doing today. I want to get in depth there. But um, before we do that, I, I think it's real. I can tell when somebody really loves what they did, and you did fall in love with it in your early 20s, that whole HR side and the, and the recruiting side, I think it's really interesting because mm -hmm. I find that the people that really love it that are in the profession, they do very well, and their clients are better served by them. And um, I think that – um, just like you, how you discovered it kind of by accident, there may be some mm -hmm. younger individuals right now that are just graduating college that are um, listening to you and they're discovering it by accident as we speak. Um, that being said, um, what kind of advice would you give to that young person that maybe hasn't concern, um, considered going in that direction as a career? Yeah, and that's a great point, uh, Adam. And, you know, the first thing that I like to tell a lot of the students, and I do a lot of career coaching for both young and uh, and seasoned veterans in the, in the working world, but the first thing I like to tell people is, listen, if you don't really know what you want to do professionally, don't stress about it. I literally graduated without a clue. Uh, my parents were both in the nonprofit world. My dad's an ordained minister. My mom worked in nonprofit daycare centers. And all I knew was that I wanted to do something different, and I had no business role models. And what I did was I followed where I really was most excited. Who did I like working for, the kinds of problems I like solving, and what human resources, what, what attracted was that, you know, recruiting is really like setting up a team. It's like we all know how to do that from the earliest days on the playground, you know, selecting a dodgeball team, you know, who's got the strong arm, who's fast, who's quick. Um, and you translate that into the world of work, the greatest thing about the world of human resources for the people that may not be familiar with it is that I can work in any industry, in any country. I'm not vulnerable to a downturn. Let's say if I'm a specialist in banking or insurance or healthcare, I can work the craft of talent in any industry, in any part of the world. And that's very, I mean, you don't think about that, I don't think, when you're in college. You don't think about what 
are the elements I should be thinking about. A lot of the focus that we get as students is where can I make the most money? And that's not a bad thing to focus on or be aware of, but I think larger than that is, hey, if I have the capability of working cross industry, cross geography, that's going to make the domain of opportunity for me really much bigger than any other choices I could be making, you know? And I, I love that advice, and I love your thought process. So, and, and I think too much, too many of us place that focus, which you and I are far beyond uh, our just graduating years. But uh, when, when I was, I know I was thinking, where can I make some money? <laughs> and that was, right, all, right. that was all I was thinking. And, uh, and I ended up in some pretty good places. But in retrospect, if I had even opened up that other side of my thought process, it could have been interesting. Um, but let's right. see, let's, uh, let's, let's uh, switch it up a bit. I do want to get into mm -hmm. what you're doing uh, now over at Cadigan Talent Ventures. So first, uh, you hinted at it, but let's go further. Tell us a little bit more about the business, please. Sure, sure. Well, first off, my business is really just me. I call myself a talent advisor. I don't call myself a consultant because I never liked consultants, and I always felt that they overcharged me. But uh, right now, <laughs> uh, a, lot of my, a lot of my focus is really helping individuals or companies build talent strategies that are going to allow them to uh, bring in a great team, to realize the best out of that team, to, to really get to levels of high performance, and then also to try to help companies distinguish themselves in a very, very busy, competitive market for talent. And you know this because we both happen to live in the Bay Area, California, especially Northern California, extremely competitive to try to get a good group of people. And the opportunities, it's like a career candy store here. There's so many cool companies with cool benefits, mm -hmm. working on cool products. And so it's hard if you are a known company, you don't have the sex appeal. I help organizations uh, around the world you know, try to find their story, try to find their real unique elements of their culture that are going to allow them to stand out and to, and, and to bring in really good people. And so that's largely what I do. I speak at conferences around the world about this. I'm in the midst of uh, finishing a book around the future of work. Um, and the, the biggest thing I'm focused on right now in that respect is the fact that how people are thinking about working careers is going through a radical transformation right now. People are not staying in companies as long as they used to. In fact, the Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, that measures every dimension of workers in the United States has said in the last five years, the length of time that professionals between the ages of 25 and 35, the average length of time they stay in a company is 2.5 years. And that is the average. So think about that. We've got a huge number staying a lot less. I would venture in the Bay Area, it may even be less than two years that people mm -hmm. stay on average. So, so how do you build something special when people aren't staying? And should you try to keep people longer, or should maybe you think about a model where you take into account that people may not want to stay, and that's not something that you should be offended by, but you should recognize the reality is workers have far more choice around where to go than ever before, and they may want to make moves more than we've ever seen at any point in the workforce. Yeah, I love that, and I, I love the insight, and it's pretty obvious. And I love that. I love the way you worded it um, as as you're helping people with talent strategy. And I think it's changed. Once upon a time, you could just put up a post, and you know, you, you got flooded with uh, with resumes, which that still happens. Right. But now, right. the amount of time and the amount of effort, and even um, possibly the amount of expense it takes to get through those, even with AI and all the other things that are coming. I mean, all these things help. But that being said, without a deliberate and focused strategy, as you mentioned. And um, you can still just be throwing darts at the wall, even with the right talent. Um, can you take it maybe just one step further on that concept of talent strategy? Because I don't think we talk about mm -hmm. it enough, in my opinion. Sure, sure, sure. Listen, you know, at, at, its, at its most fundamental, you know, what you're trying to realize in any organization is you're trying to create value. And what I always ask when I, you know, I was speaking to 300 CEOs in South San Francisco a few months ago, and I said, Okay, so uh, let me ask all of you, how do you create value? And they say, oh, we create value through people. And I said, so if people are creating value, is that the first thing you talk about in every business meeting you have and every boardroom call? Is it the first agenda when you have a company all hands and you talk <laughs> about people? Or are you talking about the sales target, the new product, the new business strategy? And the truth is, 
you know, we kind of take it for granted that, you know, people's mm-hmm. strategy is important, but we don't always allocate the right amount of time. Do we have the right people? Do we have in, in the right jobs? Are we building the right skills for today and for tomorrow? Are we aware of where we have some vulnerabilities? And so here's where I think it gets really interesting today in the world of talent strategy is that there was a, a former CEO of a Xerox Park. Uh, his name is John C. Lee Brown. He, uh, since leaving Xerox, he's dedicated his life to understanding education. And his years of research have arrived at the fact that today, the average value of a skill that we have only lasts us around five to ten years. And it used to be wow. the entirety of our career. So think about that for a second. If you, wow. The skills you need as a company are always going to change. That's terrifying for both the company and individuals. Well, what should I study? What skills do I need? What, you know, what are companies going to need in the future? It's almost impossible to predict. So what I'm trying to help companies understand is, listen, people are going to leave if you are not developing them and making them safer for tomorrow. That job security today is more about having skills for tomorrow than having skills for today. So what you need to really be thinking about with a talent strategy is, if I want to keep people here, and this is where things get a little bit edgy, I say, I think the right recruiting slogan today is, come join my company because I'm going to help you leave it. And that's mm-hmm. very uncomfortable. But the people, if, if I feel that you are not preparing me for tomorrow in this world where the robots and AI are coming to take my job, I'm going to leave and go somewhere that's going to make me safer for tomorrow. And so nobody – so I ask the CEOs, are people staying at your company longer today than they were yesterday? No. Okay, so why are you upset that they're leaving? Are you, are you promising anyone five years of employment guaranteed? No. Okay, so they're not promising they're staying, and you're not promising that you're going to keep them. So maybe <laughs> – So what's next? Maybe, yeah, so, so I think that the future – it's interesting. The more I think about the future of work and the future of talent, it's all about the future – of learning and and the more that you can show a company and this is gets back to one of the questions you brought up earlier like advice people thinking about well, what should i study what what can make me the most valuable in the marketplace of the future i think since none of us really know what skills are going to be needed in abundance in the future what we do know is they're different than today so if you can show and learn new things you can apply those skills faster you're going to be far more relevant. You know, and I was looking at your background, Adam, you've taken a lot of different pivots, um, you know, and, and that's allowed you to, to be able to experiment and explore different things and find out your sweet spot that makes your heart sing. And I think we're seeing that play out a lot more is that careers are less linear paths in the future and more sort of experimental journeys. And that's something that feels really uncomfortable because – we're told, you know, find your thing, lock and load, get that degree, and, you know, hunker down and become an expert. And today, I really worry that experts kind of are in going to be an endangered species because the deeper you are and the narrower your expertise, the more vulnerable you are when technology is inevitably going to change what you're mm-hmm. working on in some, some dimension. You follow me? Oh, I love it. And you bring up a, a great point I always tell people because people will ask me you know, on LinkedIn, other places, you know, a like career advice, this, that. And I'm like, you know, I, I, I can tell you one thing about my career. I didn't say that when I graduated college, I wanted to be a podcaster because podcasts didn't right. exist, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I couldn't I couldn't have, I couldn't have had that foresight if podcast didn't even exist. So if you're in school right now or graduating or something else, there's probably some people listening to this right now that are going to be a drone operator delivering something from some remote who knows where that isn't even approved yet. So so we don't know what we're all going to be like how yeah. how the future workforce is going to look. So I, I love I love that you bring up that point, Steve. Um, yeah, and so and that, when we talk about that, when we talk about that, it's really that's uncomfortable. You know, it's a new way. The, the future, uh, the Institute of the Future has said that in 20 years, 70% of the jobs are going to be performed that don't, they're, they're going to be jobs that don't even exist today, you know? And so you know, the only way to get comfortable with it is to say, you know what, I can learn anything. I can, you know, I can learn stuff and I can apply it. And that's, uh, you know, but it, but it is, you know, the rhetoric that annoys me to no end around people who talk about the future is it's all about AI and robots and your job's going away. And I'm like, okay, 
I understand that, but that's the wrong conversation. The right conversation is how can you be relevant tomorrow, not look out the robots are in your rearview mirror, you know? <laughs> that's awesome. So, Steve, if somebody's listening to this right now and they want yeah. more information on uh, Cadigan Talent Ventures or to connect with you, uh, what's the best way for them to reach out? Um, multiple ways. I have a website, CadiganVentures.com. Uh, I welcome people to check out my stuff there. I have many articles I publish. There's dozens and dozens of, of videos of me talking on all a lot of the stuff we talked about today. You can also email me at Steve S T E V E at CaddingInventures.com. Um, and I really love to hear people's stories, particularly stories of like unique career paths or or ideas on companies doing really interesting things, uh, exploring this whole notion of the future of work. Awesome. Well, hey, Steve, really appreciate you coming on the show today and uh, sharing more about your background and all the great work you're doing over at Cadigan Talent Ventures um, for your clients. And uh, to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes Store, uh, do all those great things we do to support our podcasters. I really do appreciate it. And, Steve, thanks again for coming on. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It was my pleasure.